It's just begun a comprehensive root and branch update of its 2006 ISDA definitions to reflect the many changes in market practice and regulation that have occurred over the past 14 years. Making changes to the industry standard terms for interest rate derivatives will have a number of important implications and significant benefits for participants active in this market. To help explain the changes and why they're necessary, I'm joined by Rick Sanderlands, Senior Counsel for Europe at ISDA. So, Rick, why is there a need for the 2020 ISDA interest rate derivatives definitions? Well, simply put, there have been a lot of changes in the derivatives market since 2006. For example, new regulations have led to fundamental changes in the way that the market is structured, with collateralization and central counterparties far more prevalent today than they were when the 2006 definitions were first conceived. There's now also an increased emphasis on contractual robustness against contingencies such as market closures and benchmark cessation. Members have also fed back to us areas in which the 2006 definitions can be overhauled or improved. The list of floating rate options needs to be refreshed to remove those benchmarks no longer used in the market and to include others which are coming into more widespread use. The Bank for International Settlements estimates that the average daily turnover in the derivatives market equates to around $6.5 trillion. It's clearly critical that the industry standard terms for those trades are state of the art. In other words, that they reflect current market practice, but also that they have the flexibility to evolve for future changes too. The 2006 is the definitions themselves have been amended by uh, nearly 70 supplements, but this brings its own difficulties. To determine the terms of a trade, parties have to manually assemble the definitional booklet, plus the various supplements, typically in paper or PDF form, in a process that is manually intensive and easy to get wrong. We want to move away from that approach by publishing the 2020 definitions on a web-based versioning platform. This will allow us to easily amend and restate the booklet in its entirety, so no more compiling separate supplements. It will also allow us to provide functionality that will make the definitions easier to use, hyperlinking defined terms to their definitions, for example, or allowing different versions of the document to be compared to see how they changed over time. Okay, so you've, you've talked about the, the web versioning platform, but what are the other main changes that we can expect to see in the 2020 definitions? Well, at a high level, we definitely want to keep everything that continues to work well under the 2006 definitions. So the good news is that a lot of the provisions were not changed substantively at all. But as I mentioned earlier, the 2020 definitions do need to be updated. The changes to the working group are considering range from the substantive to the highly technical. To give a few examples, new methodologies have been suggested for the valuation me mechanics used to settle swaptions and trades subject to mandatory or optional early termination so as to better reflect current collateral practices. We're reviewing provisions relating to the role of the calculation agent and the floating rate options will be altered to ensure there's a single definition for each interest rate benchmark irrespective of where the rate is published rather than having multiple definitions based on price source. Of course, the 2020 definitions will incorporate the forthcoming IBOR fallback supplement for the 2006 definitions, but we're also considering what robust fallbacks may be appropriate for non-IBOR benchmarks. And finally, the 2020 definitions are being structured with a view to making their mechanics available as open source code using ISDA's common domain model. That should help pr promote consistency of implementation at a technical level. Right, so what is it that firms need to do now? Well, we expect to publish the 2020 definitions at the end of this year, but we know from experience of previous updates that there's likely to be at least a six-month lag before they're adopted on a widespread basis. However, people need to start thinking about this now because the proposed changes will have an impact across firms, from legal to trading to operations. As a result, it's important firms take this opportunity to get involved with the process and ensure that the 2020 definitions take their views into account. Ultimately, we think these changes are incredibly important. Given the size of the interest rate derivatives market, we really need to have definitions in place that reflect current market practices and are robust and better structured. We think the web versioning platform and provision of open source code will result in huge efficiencies for firms that will make the process of changing systems worthwhile. All in all, these changes will mean mar the market has a set of definitions that will last for the next decade or more. Thanks. As Rick mentions, the 2020 definitions will be published at the end of the year. If you're interested in participating in the various working groups, or if you just want more information, please visit ISDA's website.